Do. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Point of personal privilege. Please proceed, gentlemen. Okay. I would like to talk about a teacher, an activist, a leader, and a police officer. Alvin Brooks has served as a bridge in Kansas City for decades. As one of the city's first black police officers, an educator, a civil rights leader, a founder of ad hoc group against crime, and almost a Kansas City mayor. Alvin Brooks was born in 1932 as Alvin Lee Gilder and grew up in North Little Rock, Arkansas. His biological mother, Thomasine Gilder, sent him to go live with the Brooks family who later adopted him. Brooks' father was the only black moonshiner in the area during prohibition and he supplied alcohol to the sheriff and judge of that community. After getting into some trouble, the Brooks family was forced to leave Arkansas and ended up in Kansas City. According to Brooks' book, Brooks' father built a house in Kansas City that burnt down, which forced them to live in a barn until they found a new home and integrated into a poor white neighborhood. Growing up in the Jim Crow era of Kansas City, Brooks went through life-altering experiences that set the course for the remainder of his life. In 1954, Brooks joined the police force. Brooks says he and the other black officers turned the black community upside down with their presence on the force. They were gratified to see him, and he was well-received and well-respected because that community was so small. small. But it was tough. The mob ruled Kansas City in those days, and black officers didn't have the same rights as white officers. According to Brooks, they were only relegated to ride two districts, and if you were a black officer, you couldn't arrest a white person. You had to detain them, but the white officer had to come and take them, and you can appear in court, but you couldn't ride in the police officer with the person you detained. Despite these hurdles, Brooks and the other black officers didn't use excessive force or beatings, and within a racist and at times corrupt system, they did their best to uphold law and order. After 10 years on the force, the department hadn't raised him in the ranks, so Brooks decided to head in a new direction and took a job with the Kansas City Public Schools. His role was to develop relationships with students and parents. In 1977, in response to an uptick in kidnappings and missing people, specifically black women, Brooks and a group of concerned citizens came together to find an organization called Ad Hoc, Ad Hoc Group Against Crime. To this day, Ad Hoc continues to take a grassroots approach to combating crime, reducing substance abuse, and supporting families who have been traumatized by violent crimes in Kansas City for decades. Now 91, Brooks looks back at a full life of helping others, and as a reminder, he was amongst the first black, uh, he was amongst the first black officers in KC Mo, but he also set up City Hall's first human relations department, becoming the city's first black department head. He was named assistant city manager, and he served on the Kansas City Council. Brooks still keeps busy showing up to community engagements, answering calls to help, spending time with family, and supporting grassroots anti-crime efforts and continuing to advocate for justice. Rockhurst University in Kansas City is currently building a criminal justice center that will be named in his honor, the Alvin Brooks Center for Faith Justice. And he asked the body that everyone mark their calendars for his 100th birthday in 2032. Thank you for this Black History Moment.